Bonjour! Today I will be reviewing Le Diabolique, directed by Henri Georges Clouseau, starring Villa Clouseau, Simone Signonet, and Paul. I can't pronounce his last name. <laughs> Alright, so Le Diabolique has the distinction of being the blueprint of Albert Hitchcock's psycho. Strangely, and oddly enough, Hitchcock actually wanted to direct this movie, but unfortunately lost out to Clouseau. Well, when I say unfortunately, I just mean in terms of, you know, shit happens. But, of course, he would recover a couple of years later with Psycho, and we all know how that one took off. But going back to Le Diabolique. Le Diabolique uh, set the groundwork of quite a few contemporary suspense thrillers that you know of today. So, although if you watch this film in this day and age, it will seem incredibly old hat to you, but you have to remember, way back in the 1950s, you know, nobody had seen anything like this before. And uh, for good reason. The stuff in this movie can be, you know, described as being transgressive. What with it, what with its story? So, uh, the story is as follows, generally. You have two women. One played by uh, uh, Vila Crusoe, who plays the wife of De Sale, who, uh, who's played by the dude named Paul. And uh, you have the mistress, played by Simone Signore. So rather than the two women duking it out in a catfight as per the misogynistic preference, they actually conspire together in order to kill uh, De Sale. Now, uh, it's a very, very straightforward uh, story, but the way Crusoe has filmed it, that is what has made it so enduring throughout time. The utilization of shadows and reflections play a huge part in how this movie looks. Clouseau was always a very instinctive and very artful director. He was able to translate poetry into his visions. <laughs> and uh, in such a way, he was able to formulate a brand new universe. Like, it wasn't beyond what your own imagine can, imagination can conjure up, but it was so heavily stylish, st stylish, stylish, be stylish, and uh, and it shows in the final product of the film. If you ask me, La Diabolique looks amazing in black and white because it is able to utilize you know shadows just so grandly. The, the way that the light captures a person's profile, or a posture, or a gesture, you know, the, you know, body language is something that just isn't appreciated as much these days. You know, back in the, the 1950s, in French cinema in particular, like, there was a lot more uh, liberation in the films that were made. There was more of an artistic license and a little more ease when it came to uh, showing transgressive stuff. Now, nothing in this film is pornographic, it is completely tamed by today's standards, I assure you. But once again, you have to appreciate, to audiences in the 1950s, especially if you were American and you saw this film, you would have been so shocked. And not just because of uh, the, the acts that are taking place, but just how, you know, again, how liberal it is. Um, you actually see a man, the, the abusive husband, or, you know, abusive husband, uh, boyfriend, whatever, you see him being drugged, and you see him being drowned. You know, drowned in a bathtub. And when he's dead, his eyes roll to the back of his head like that. And that is one of the most haunting images in the film. Now, I'm... You know, out of good taste, I'm not going to give away the ending because there may be some of you out there who want to watch this movie with a brand new, fresh set of eyes. But let me tell you, the imagery in this movie is what truly makes it rise above others of its ilk. Just like Psycho, in a sense. Although Psycho had more an advantage when it came to the story and the twists and the turns and everything, La Diabolique is just so visually astounding and everything that is on the screen works in its favour. Now, the relationship between the two female characters of Christine and uh, Nicole, the, uh, the, the two women, the, it is very, very interesting. Again, there's, there's nothing to insinuate, you know, anything overt about it, but you really get a sensation that these women aren't just partners, they could be lovers. Um, the body language is still very sort of uh, you know neutral, if you will. Like they're not 
crawling over each other and kissing, you know, uh, that sort of thing. But again, it all comes from the performances and what the screen shows you. Both of these actresses are so good at, you know, emoting how they are feeling through, you know, through their voices and their actions. It's really astounding. Um, but the mistress, Nicole, she was a favourite of mine because of how close she played it to the vest. Both women felt intense paranoia, especially as the film goes on, when they realise that their plan is starting to come back and bite them in the butt. But the way Nicole is able to keep herself composed and able to sort of, you know, control the situation, as well as control uh, Christina, played by Vila Crusoe, it's very, very cool to see a female character like that. Now, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, these are role models, of course, but yeah, considering this movie is essentially about two women, you know, getting their revenge on uh, somebody who has caused them ire, in this case a man, it's, it's very tactfully done. Clouseau isn't showing these women to be uh, screeching violent harpies. He isn't afraid to show them, uh, and you, the extension let me start again. He isn't afraid to show the audience what these women are being put through by this motherfucking dude. Okay, we don't see anything particularly graphic, of course, but we get the insinuation that he does terrible things to them. And yeah, there is justification in what these women do. Okay, you may not necessarily agree with the murder, but put yourself in their position in the context of this movie. And you will find yourself caring a lot more for them than you would initially think. Now, I'm only, I'm only really speaking for myself here, but again, this movie is so capable at controlling and manipulating your emotions. It plays you every which way, and that is what I love most about it. It, it isn't afraid to, you know, reach deep down in, inside of your own psychology and bring out a sense of paranoia in you. And that paranoia just seeps through in the screen. That the final sequence um, that takes place inside the uh, the boarding school, where the, the two women work and the, um, the the dude work, is amazing. Like it's very minimal. It is so Spartan, but it's so tightly filmed and beautifully edited. And uh, Vera Clouseau is amazing when she's selling that growing sense of dread and fear. It's so good. <laughs> um, so yeah, going back to Clouseau's own sort of style, not just with the shadows but with, with reflections. There are so many reflections in this movie. You will see them in mirrors, in water, in, um, in car doors, because they are sort of reflecting back about how a character is feeling, or how a character may perceive themselves. It might be heavy-handled um, symbology, I'll grant you, but again, it's just so beautifully woven into the movie and so tactfully done. It's it's great. It really is great. Um, now, I've, is this like the distinctive suspense film? No, it's not. But it is so highly influential and rightfully so for all the good things it does. My only uh, criticisms I have for this movie is that it's limited by its own time frame. Um, that is to say, it's, you know, whatever societal norms were going on at the time, you can see there was a limit put on to what you could and couldn't see, and what sort of stories you could tell. But working within the confines as it did, it works beautifully. So, uh, in the long run, I would give uh, Les Diaboliques a uh, 4 out of 5, and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Um, if you decide to check out the Diabolique remake, starring Sharon Stone, Isabella Gianni, and Chaz Palamiteri, uh, prepare for disappointment. It's really not that good. So you're better off sticking with the original, and in, in this case, the best. So yes! That was my talk, and I shall see you again with another review. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other, and be strong. <laughs>